I don't know if you remember my story or not. I've told it once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> Before she broke the record for most time in space by an American. A huge honor uh, to break a record like this. Before she set the spacewalking record for women. Before she became the first female chief of the astronaut office. Up here we don't wear shoes, but uh, Shane's leaving some really big socks for me to fill. <laughs> Before she became the commander of the International Space Station, the first time. Thank you, I relieve you, Fyodor Nikolaevich of command. Peggy Whitson was just a young girl in Iowa with big ambitions. I uh, watched the first guys walk on the moon when I was nine years old and was totally inspired by it, but of course there were no female astronauts and I was just a farm kid and I had no idea how to become an astronaut. And it wasn't until I graduated high school and NASA selected the first female astronauts and that's when it changed from being a dream to being uh, a goal. As a young kid, I always thought I wanted to be, you know, some combination of Captain Kirk and, and Dr. Spock. So, uh, so I wanted to be something like that. Luckily, you know, I, I pursued my goal and, you know, with a, passing a lot of hurdles and a lot of time and rejections, I finally made it uh, to become an astronaut in uh, 1996. Following a storied career at NASA, Whitson retired from the agency in 2018 before joining Axiom Space. She served as the backup commander to Michael Lopez Alegria on Axiom Mission 1 before making her return to the space station on AX2 in 2023. I left NASA not ever expecting to fly in space again and here commercial space industry and Axiom Space has allowed me that opportunity uh, in just a few years from my retirement from NASA. So things are changing very quickly in space. And now, after amassing a record 675 days in space, Whitson will return to space once again as the commander of the AX4 mission. She'll also reunite with the familiar face, Sergei Rezhikov, who was on orbit the last time she served as commander of the space station. For me, returning to space is always a special experience. Every mission is different. Is okay. Every crew brings something new to the table. I've been incredibly impressed by the dedication and the work ethic and the passion of this team. It's been a joy to train alongside them and I'm looking forward to seeing them in microgravity. It's going to be fun. <laughs> As the director of human spaceflight for Axiom Space, Whitson will also use this latest chapter in space to continue providing first-hand experience for Axiom Space's biggest undertaking, creating the Axiom Station. Having that, a lot of flight experience, it's been great for me to be able to share with the engineers who are working on Axiom Station things that are important to a crew from a crew perspective. But it's also fun to be able to take their new ideas and say, yeah, that's a great one. Or maybe this one would work better if you do something slightly different because in space this happens. So it's nice to be able to use my experience to explain that to folks uh, and help them advance more quickly. Shubanshu Shukla. Shuks is his call sign. He's from India a fighter pilot for 15 years. He was selected as one of four Indian astronauts in 2020. Shooks picks up the baton from Rakesh Sharma, the first Indian astronaut who flew to space back in 1984. Shooks was born a year later. Consequently, I grew up reading about him in textbooks and listening to his stories from space. I was deeply, deeply impressed by him. However, the thought of becoming an astronaut myself never really took root because India did not have an active human spaceflight program back then. Even with space being a far-off dream, young Shukla still kept his eyes skyward. Another impressionable thing that I witnessed was an air show when I was in grade 6. I remember being shaken by a sneaking fighter jet that came up from behind us extremely low and pulled up towards the sky. And I lost it in a matter of a few seconds. When the opportunity presented itself for me to join the armed forces, I knew I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Shukla joined the IAF in June 2006 and graduated from the Indian Air Force Test Pilot School as a test pilot in 2018. The timing of that was serendipitous to say the least. On 15th August 2018, Honorable Prime Minister of India announced that a son or daughter of the country would fly to space soon. And as a result, Mission Gaganyaan was born. As a spacefaring nation, human space explorers are very important to us. We have our own Gaganyan program, which aims to build technical expertise and infrastructure for the 
for enabling human presence in low Earth orbit. The experience and know-how from AX4 mission are significant to us, and that would feed into our Gaganyan program. Our astronaut candidates Sukhanshu Shukla and Prashant Balakrishnan Nayar have been into training since August last year. As mentioned, they have undergone a rigorous training, mission-specific, nominal emergency procedures. They have practiced in various simulators and with periodic assessment on physical and psychological. Throughout his selection, training, and development as an astronaut, Shukla says Rakesh Sharma was consistently involved. He is really intertwined in the uh, proceedings of uh, the human spaceflight mission that we were already executing. We regularly uh, keep in touch and he is kind of a mentor for me who is advising me on a lot of things of uh, what to expect, how to prepare for this uh, particular mission. Beyond just achieving the goals of the research work on board the ISS, Shukla says he wants to inspire other young minds. From orbit, I will also be speaking live with students, educators and members of India's growing space industry, sharing not just experiences, but inspiration. If even one young dreamer is moved to explore the cosmos because of this mission, we will have already succeeded. I hope to ignite curiosity and excitement in young minds to let them know that space is not a distant dream, but a future they can shape. Helping explain the world around him is who Swavosh Uznansky Vishnevsky is at his core. Swavosh Uznansky Vishnevsky. His name is a mouthful, so we quickly gave him the call sign Suave. His doctoral work on radiation-tolerant designs for space came in handy in his work at CERN as the engineer in charge of the Large Hadron Collider. If you're thinking he's a nerd, trust me, you don't know the half of it. <laughs> I was born the 12th of April on the anniversary of Gagarin's first flight to space. For as long as I can remember, every year for my birthday, my mom was always wishing me a happy cosmonaut day. I was always interested in how the world works around us. This childhood curiosity sometimes drove everyone crazy, but I kept it with me until today, both as an engineer as well as a mountaineer. In the mountains, curiosity helped me to go further, higher, and see with my own eyes how the world looks from the next peak. Throughout my life, curiosity drove me to leaving my hometown, studying in France, living in Switzerland, working on my PhD in space system design, climbing the Himalayas, designing the biggest science machines on Earth. But I was always having my childhood dream in the back of my head. His dream finally took root when the European Space Agency opened up astronaut selection in 2022. He was named as a reserve astronaut. And in September 2023, ESA announced he would be training for a future space mission. I started my training with Axiom Space at the beginning of August 2024. So it's been, let's say, seven months of, of training and a lot, a lot has been accomplished during that time. As astronauts of Axiom uh, mission, we train in Japan on Kibo module, on Japanese experimental module on the ISS, with Europe in Cologne on Columbus, that is our European laboratory on the station. With NASA, we mostly train the emergency cases, medical procedures, how to deal with the life on the ISS, as well as how to um, perform the daily hygiene and how to use operational tools. Uznansky Vishniewski and the crew also traveled to Huntsville, Alabama and Marshall Space Flight Center, where they worked with payload scientists to help manage experiments on board the space station. That's important since Uznansky Vishniewski and his crew have a lot to tackle in a very short time frame. This mission is a short duration space mission, uh, so it means it's very focused. Uh, we have more than uh, 13 Polish experiments on board of this uh, mission. We're also doing science for the Indian uh, uh, Space Agency, for the Hungarian Space Agency, so it's also an international collaboration mission. And it will be very intense because the timeline is packed 80 hours, full 80 hours of science and technology. Uznanski Vishniewski will be just the second Polish astronaut to travel to space and the first to travel to the International Space Station. For Poland, the first space flight took place over 47 years ago in 1978 as the fourth nation to go to space. I was born in the 80s, like Shrooks, and uh, this first flight became a real symbol of pride in Poland. Unfortunately, 
Miroslav Hermaszewski died back in 2022, years before he could see another poll follow in his footsteps, but not before he glimpsed that future. He was a big supporter and trying and waiting for, you know, decades for someone to take the relay from him. He was a big supporter for me during my selection process. He saw me being selected by the European Space Agency. Unfortunately, he will not be able to see the mission, but to cherish and to, to, to bind our both missions together, I'll take a Polish flag that was on his spacesuit during the mission in 1978. And this will be a, a big moment for me and, uh, and a big honor to, to honor his mission, but as well looking into the future for many more for Poland to come, I hope. The formal name for Uznański Wisniewski's mission is Ignis, the Latin word for fire. The patch depicts an eagle, the emblem of Poland, and, like its name, Uznański Wisniewski hopes his work in space will light a fire in the imaginations of Polish youth. Space missions always inspire people and will use Axiom 4 to create a true impact in education. From the ISS, I will be running live physics demonstrations for schools and science centers across the whole country. I am very excited about these lessons and I hope they will inspire many more back home to ask questions about how the world works. Watching the Olympics together with my mom was always a strong connection and a strong link between us. Seeing our athletes performing on the highest levels, being extremely proud and cheering to them like a family member, I've always wanted to be someone who has his own jersey with my own name and my own flag on it. Representing my country on the biggest stage alongside with my team. Kapu was like many kids growing up in the 90s. Beginning by playing with Legos, he eventually followed in his dad's footsteps by becoming a mechanical engineer. I became a mechanical engineer like my dad because I always like to you know, build and create things. He's more of a fixer. He can fix everything at home as long as it has any moving parts in it. And because of that, he instantly became a role model for me. Kapu has a lot of passions from skydiving to running to hiking and playing instruments like ukulele and guitar. But a rare opportunity presented itself four years ago that gave his life a new direction. Hungary is a small country with a big history and big dreams. And Hungarian is a language spoken by very few people, but many talents. That's the reason we decided to initiate a space program in 2021 to select and prepare a Hungarian to conduct Hungarian research on board the ISS. Kapu was one of four people selected out of nearly 250 to train as part of the Hungarian to Orbit or Hunor astronaut program. Helping along the way, the first Hungarian to go to space, Bertrand Farkas. My experience with Bertrand Farkas, or Berti, how we call him at home, is very similar uh, than what you have with Rakes um, Shux. Uh, he has been part of um, the Hunor selection and preparation. Uh, we had a quite some long selection, which took 14 months, and then a basic training, which took another 14 months. And uh, he was there for the whole time with us, um, overseeing the whole uh, basic training with the love of a grandpa. He also gave uh, extremely good advice. We should always be patient. That's, I think, a big part of a space flight for sure. Uh, and to approach any challenge that we face with a big smile on our faces. Kapu says Hunor came about at the right time. He says having the commercial space industry open the doors to Hungarian researchers and scientists will only accelerate his country's space program. And being able to send a Hungarian astronaut into orbit for the first time since 1980 will also be inspirational for many future astronauts and kids interested in STEM work. I think re-entering um, this stage is a huge thing for us. We will accelerate Hungarian science and research. Uh, our missions, I think I can speak for other guys as well, are designed to spark excitement uh, in younger generations. It is my personal motivation to, to inspire them. Reporting for Spaceflight Now, I'm Will Robinson-Smith.